Good morning! Day 4 in Vandenberg. So yesterday our trip to Lady Musgrave was cancelled. So we rebooked it today. We're supposed to go home today but we rebooked our Lady Musgrave so we can experience it before we go back to Brisbane. So we hope that there's no problem anymore and we can go to Lady Musgrave safely. We didn't stay long inside the boat because we find that staying outside for fresh air makes the trip more bearable. With the combination of the wave, the wind, and travel calm, you'll feel very sleepy. So it's either you sleep inside the boat or just feel the fresh air outside the deck. Bella fell asleep because of the motion of the boat while Mateo is very drowsy and sleepy as well. Since we took travel calm yesterday and we felt so drowsy, today we only took half of the tablet. Some of our friends decided not to take it because of their experience yesterday. However, they felt seasick. Before we reach the island, the tour guide talks about different kind of coral that we're gonna see. Brain coral. Exactly. It looks like a brain coral, but a brain coral. When we reached the Lady Musgrave pontoon deck, we were given an instruction that our group will go for snorkeling first. They have all the gears that you can borrow for snorkeling and even for small kids. So I went with Mateo to go snorkeling first and TJ stayed with Bella. We are given one hour to do the snorkeling. The plan is I'll go snorkeling for 30 minutes with Mateo and I'll go back to the deck so TJ will have his turn. But since we're in open water, it was really hard to go back to the deck to give TJ a chance to do snorkeling. We've seen a lot of beautiful corals, but since I'm paying more attention to Mateo and hurrying to go back to the deck, I wasn't able to see much of the fishes. The water is just too big to explore with a limited time. Though our friends managed to see more and even swim with turtles. Enjoy watching the beautiful corals and fishes with the sound of underwater. After an hour, our group was called for lunch. 
The food is pretty good, but just expect that all foods are cold meals. After the meal, it was our turn to go to the island. We used a small boat with a glass floor where you can see the coral and the fishes underneath the boat. It's really such a fun experience and we see lots of turtles swimming around us. Going for a tour now. Lady Musgrave is a coral cay on Australia's Great Barrier Reef. The island is named after Lady Lucinda Musgrave, the wife of Sir Anthony Musgrave, a colonial governor of Queensland. Between October to April is the best time when most migrant bird species like mutton birds arrive from Papua New Guinea. They migrate to this island to nest and fish around the island. It's a must to follow the guide because we have to take precaution not to stray from the paths of the island as the burrows easily collapse under the weight of a person. Um, so these burrows back here are uh, about two meters deep and they go diagonally into the ground. So if we accidentally step on one of them, uh, they will most likely collapse. Uh, we obviously don't want you guys to hurt yourselves, but we also don't want you to hurt the chicks that live inside them. So the burrows here are made by a bird known as shearwaters while Pisonoa trees are the primary vegetation on the island. The trees flower twice a year, producing a pod that grows in cluster and contain black seed covered in a thick mucus. And most of the time, the birds will be trapped and they will be covered in so many seed pods and they cannot move their wings to fly. And unfortunately, they will slowly starve to death. But this is the circle of life in this island. The bird's remains will fertilize the soil and the soil replenish the trees. Also every year between November to January, hundreds of mother turtles make their way to the Lady Musgrave to nest. Then hatchling commence around January to March. It will be absolutely amazing to see thousands of turtle hatchling in the island shores. If you want to experience all this, you have an option to camp in the island, but you have to book ahead and they only take up to 40 people. The camping area is limited facilities and you have to bring your own tent. So the campers has to be self-sufficient. I love the water here, it's so calm and clear. I wish we have more time in the beach. It is stunning and well preserved. Maybe that's the reason why we weren't allowed to stay for a long time. The water is so clear and so inviting to swim. However, according to the guide, it's not allowed to swim here because East and West Fairfax Island were used as a bombing range by Royal Australian Air Force and Royal Australian Navy from 1940 to 60s. And it's also likely that during World War II, Lady Musgrave Reef was also used for bombing practice. When you're coming to the island, make sure to wear something to protect your feet. The glass boat is back to pick us up from the island and we're going back to the main boat. We're loading now. The guide show us more corals before we head back to the deck.
When we went back to the deck, we are still allowed to go back to snorkeling. And this time, I let TJ to go and enjoy snorkeling while I look after the kids. While we are waiting, we spend time under the observation area. There's not a lot of fish, but it's a good spot to entertain them. For me, this will be the highlight of our trip to Bundaberg, and I'm happy that we came along to stay and rebook our trip to Lady Musgrave experience. But it took a toll for Bella when going back to Brisbane. She was crying most of the time traveling back home, and since it's already night time, we didn't really have a planned stopover, but we did stop a couple of times every time we find a chance so she can rest from crying. And we finally reached home at 12 midnight. Thank you for watching our Lady Musgrave and Bundaberg vlog. If you haven't seen day 1 to day 3, check out my channel and you'll see what activities we had in Bundaberg. See you again next time for our next vlogs and DIY videos. Bye!